Um, hi there. Uh, my name is uh, Harold Noack. Um, I'm a retired meteorologist living here in Melbourne, Australia, and the date today is the 14th of January 2020. Um, the title of this video, The Collapse Conjecture, looking at the total stopping time, another emergent property. Um, now, to generate the 3n plus 1 sequence denoted by S0, S1, all the way to Sn, you use when Sn is even, Sn plus 1 is equal to Sn divided by 2, and when Sn is odd, Sn plus 1 is equal to 3Sn plus 1 divided by 2. Now, where the sequence goes is dependent upon the value of S0, uh, which can be any integer. When S0 is greater than 0, uh, the sequence always goes to 1, uh, which is a cycle being 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, the trivial cycle. Um, and this is called the Collatz conjecture. Um, the number of steps from S0 to 1 uh, is called the delay or the total stopping time. And the value of uh, the st total stopping time from for one S0 value to the next S0 value is chaotic in nature. Um, now here is a graph of S0 versus um, the total stopping time for S0 from 1 uh, to 1000. Um, now look, I'm sure you've seen, you've seen this before. Um, the TST um, going from one S value to the next S uh, value appears to be chaotic. But when you look at many S0 values in this way, it appears to be more organized, more like a 2D diffraction pattern. The pattern looks even more organized if we plot the log of S0 versus TST. Um, and that you can see that there on the graphic. Now the TST values tend to line up along approximate straight lines with a strong negative slope and other approximate straight lines with a positive slope. Now if our solutions were regular with a value at each integer, this is what it would look like. Um, and it's obviously it's obviously not that. Um, if the outcome was equally random, this is what it would look like. And as you can see, it's obviously not, not that either. Um, now, here's, here is an example of just two lines with a negative slope for the 3n plus 1 sequence of log um, uh, S0 versus TST. Um, you, can see, you can see that there. Now, if we run the line of best fit, um, for each of those lines, um, you can see that it's not exactly straight. Um, so it's not exactly a, a linear relationship, but reasonably close to. Um, and if we run uh, a line along those um, positive um, sloping um, TST values, um, I've shown that there in red. I've included values that are outside the area of the graph, but you can see that the, um, the, the line there is not a straight line either. Um, but it's got, a, it's got a degree of linearity about it. Um, now, this actually tells you a fair bit about the TST values. Although things look chaotic close up, if you stand back and look at the macro uh, properties, you can see the outcome or the immersion property is well organized. Now the values TST, the values of TST in the downward sloping line are separated by threes or have the same residual mod three number. And the upward sloping line has values separated by twos or the same residual mod two number. And now if we make the downward sloping line orthogonal to the upward sloping line, we get the TST values for S0 um, from 1 to 1000 looking like this on a 28 by 28 uh, grid. Uh, you can see the TST values that occur in yellow. You can see the number in there, you can see the uh, the 0 mod 2 and the 1 mod 2 uh, horizontal lines and the 1 mod 3, 2 mod 3, 0 mod 3, and then it goes back to 1 mod 3 um, 
in the, uh, in the as a vertical uh, line. Um, now, as we increase S0 to greater than 1,000, we keep adding values mainly on the to the right of the graph. Uh, and we get this if we just look again at that 28 by 28 graphical area. Um, and you can see everything is filled in. Um, there, are, there are no gaps in there. So it's a, a fairly regular um, and well-organized well kind of pattern. Um, I could show it out to a large area, but then you can't read, then you can't read the numbers um, that I showed there, the TST values. Um, so what, th what this does show is that the S0 continues, as S0 continues to grow larger and larger, the pattern is maintained. Individual values of TST um, may be chaotic, but on the macro scale, TST values are always well behaved. No gaps just a little rough on the top edges. Um, so the expectation that there may exist some large value of S0 that has a divergent TST value um, really flies against the logic of what we see here. Just because individual TST values are chaotic does not make the total outcome chaotic. Having said that, there may be other emergent properties that appear when S0 is very large, and I suppose I can't rule that out. Um, for those people who suspect that the pattern of TST values has something to do with even numbers having one step greater than the even number divided by two, if you only include TST values for S0 being odd, the pattern is still maintained. Um, now, when S0 is less than zero, the 3n plus 1 sequence goes to minus 1, which is a constant, minus 5 a cycle, and minus 17 a cycle. Now here is a graph of the log of minus S0 um, versus TST for S0 from minus 1 to minus 1000. Now, um, you can see here there's some organization, but it's nowhere near as good as when S0 is greater than zero. And we can color code the points for TST when the sequence goes to minus 17, minus five, and minus one. Um, and, we, and this is what the graph looks like. Minus 17 is in blue, minus five is in red, and minus one is in yellow. Um, and you start to see that this is this is, has a better organization. So it's best to view the graphs as separately. The graph, uh, here's a graph when the sequence goes to minus 17, um, and you can see it's reasonably well organized. This is minus five, again, uh, reasonably well organized, and this is um, minus one, and again, it's reasonably well organized. Um, each downward sloping line has the same a residual mod 3 value, and each upward sloping line has the same residual mod 2 value. Now we can look, we can look further um, than just the 3n plus 1 sequence. You see the 3n plus 1 sequence is based on mod 2, that's odds and even. Um, what you can do is base a sequence on mod 3, this being um, if S0 is 0 mod 3, then S1 equals S0 divided by 3. When S0 is 1 mod 3, then S1 is 4 S0 minus 1, all divided by 3. And when S0 is 2 mod 3, then S1 is equal to 4 S0 plus 1 divided by 3. Now, this always goes to 1 when S0 is greater than 0. Um, then the log of S0 versus TST looks like this. Um, and you can see this is very well organized. Um, the individual S0 values are chaotic as you go from one to the next, um, but on the macro scale, it is well organized. In fact, there are three linear lines that you can follow, one based on mod five, one based on mod four, and one based on mod two. But again, like the 3n plus 1 sequence, uh, I believe you cannot prove that the sequence will always go to 1. Um, now, 
Actually, the line corresponding to mod 2 values in this graph can also be found on the 3n plus 1 sequence for, for TST, uh, uh, for TS, for the log versus uh, TST. Um, but look, it's, it's, it is harder to see. Um, now, I'll take this a, a little further. In my last video, I used um, let S0, S1, S2, Sn be a sequence generated by the following operators. When Sn is even, then Sn plus 1 equals Sn divided by 2. And when Sn is odd, then Sn plus 1 equals 3Sn plus 2 million and 3 divided by 2. Uh, S0 is any integer other than S0 um, is congruent to 0 minus 2 million and 3. And the Sn, then Sn will always go to the 127 cycle. Now, the 127 cycle has a length of 15,126 steps and a maximum value of 48,382,644,622. Now, almost all SN, uh, almost all S0 values um, go to the 127 cycle, and that's the emergent property. Now, if you plot out a graph of the log of S0 versus TST, um, this is what you get in this case. You cannot see any relationship on the graph. It appears very similar to the random number graph I showed earlier. Now, what I, what I did, I changed um, TST to count the number of steps to a different value in the cycle. Um, but that made no difference. I also changed TST to count the number of steps required to enter a cycle, and that made no improvement. So it appears that when the sequence goes to the same value, then there is a, exists a pattern in the TST values when the value that it goes to is a constant. When the value that it goes to is part of a cycle, that pattern is still evident for short cycles. But as the cycle gets longer and longer, then the pattern disappears and the plotted TST values appear very similar to a random pattern. Um, so uh, with the individual's TST values being chaotic and the overall pattern being random, you would expect it is impossible to predict TST values for the 3N plus 2 million and three sequence, unlike potentially for the TST values for the 3N plus one sequence. So impossible to predict. Um, but the surprising answer to that is a loud and clear no, because of another emergent property. The other emergent property for the 3N, for the 3N plus two, two million and three sequence is that individual TST values may be chaotic, but for most values of S0, the value of TST is the same for all values of 3 to the power of n S0, where n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Now I've checked this out, this 3 to the power of n um, times S0, to a number as high as my computer would allow me, and it, this, and it certainly follows that pattern. Um, this means, for example, that when S0 equals 7, uh, 3 times 7 is, and next is 21, 189, 567, 1701, uh, 5,103, and go on, go on, and, you know, to the, to the limits of uh, my computing ability, uh, 59 billion, uh, 2 million, 251,789. All, every one of those numbers has the same TST value. And I, I checked it out, um, and this is going to the highest value in the cycle. That's 22,466. So all of those have a, have a TST value of 
466. And you can you can try it, you know, try it for 11 all the way up. You can try it for any 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 um, any value that you want. Um, so let's let's put this into into context for the 3n plus 1 sequence. If you know some TST values, you know the TST values for all zero mod two numbers. That's easy. It's it's one more than than the um, than the uh, than the number before it. Um, take an example. You know, if if it's four, well, four has got one more step um, than two. Um, Ten has got one more step than five. Um, so that's. That's you can you could that's what it is for the three n plus one sequence. For the three n plus two million and three sequence, if you know some TST values, you know the TST values for all zero mod two numbers, and for most of the zero mod three numbers. Now that's a large increase in information. Um, and this was kind of foreshadowed by looking if you look at the NOAC sequence. So a well-behaved log zero log of S0 versus TST is not a good guide to the amount of information you can have. And so that's the outcome of that. And finally, if you supply a neural network with a list of, say, the first um, 10,000 TST values for the 3N plus 1 sequence, on most runs, it will cor correctly predict the un upcoming TST values, but on some runs, it will cor correctly predict only most of the upcoming TST values. The correct predictions are inconsequential because the neural network has discovered the 3N plus 1 sequence. The runs that predict most of the TST values are of interest because it shows there is some process that is not the 3n plus 1 sequence but acts in a very similar way to it when predicting TST values. At this stage, I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching. This is from Harold Nowak.